Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and do you use ChatGPT? I am pretty sure some days or the other you are using ChatGPT. If not directly ChatGPT, you are using some version of these uh, open LLM models or just in general LLM models. Have you wondered how secure they are? Have we ever discussed about the security concerns of these large language models? Let me give you a few use cases and uh, they will probably give you the questions that yes, we should really talk about the security issues about them. I come from a security background and I'm all the time cautious about it, although I left that domain years ago, but still those bugs are inside me. I'm always cautious about how secure things are. Let me give you a scenario. You join into a company which is working on a state-of-the-art product. They got funded and now they are looking up for the next round of funding and that whole funding is going to be based on because you did some killer job in optimizing the cloud builds, maybe some something revolutionary as like Docker or Kubernetes. Your company has built it. You recently got hired into it and after signing all the documents that you will never leak it, this is a intellectual property, now you started working on it. You are not able to understand some of the pieces of the code and turns out that, hey, I really want to understand it. I don't want to a make myself look like a fool in front of my seniors. You copy pasted that code and asked ChatGPT that, hey, can you please explain me this code? ChatGPT with his superpower does a great job in explaining this code to you and you are all happy. But hear this out. In the terms and condition of the ChatGPT, based on the user input, sometimes vaguely chat gpt actually trains with your data and chat gpt might say that i don't do it but some of the other ways these all llm models actually use some of your data that's why it gives you all these things for free you know this facebook has already done this now imagine some days after somebody also got the exact same code exact same algorithm which was making you a proprietary thing and now this is available now anybody who is saying hey can i optimize this cloud bill and he's also getting the same result <laughs> how, how cool is that? Uh, I'm not making a, these a fictitious scenario. I'll even walk you through with some of these blog apps. I think one of the best way to learn about engineering is to do the case studies, read the blogs, the engineering blogs of these amazing websites like uh, Netflix or Disney Plus or, or these uh, Zero Da. These are gold mine on the content. And today uh, we are starting a new segment on this channel. Uh, where we are going to do research through the blogs. We are going to together do these case studies. We'll read some articles, have some opinions about it, good, bad words, whatever that is. We're going to study about that. So let me show you some of these things. And one of the article which uh, caught my attention uh, is actually in the light mode. Uh, hey, folks, can you give us a dark mode? Uh, turns out uh, the founder of the pieces, Savo, is not a big fan of the dark mode, I guess. Uh, he keeps everything black and white anyways. So anyways... Uh, notice this article. I'll link this article in the description section as well. This is pretty nice actually to actually see this. So let me just move this here a little bit. I think now you can see this. Ah, cool. Okay. Now look at this, what this article is saying that code and data security concerns regarding the cloud-based model. Almost all the models on which companies are fighting aggressively, whether that's uh, Llama, whether that's Llama is basically you try it, but anyways, Bard or ChatGPT or Copilot, uh, these are rigorously training with your data. Already there has been a lot of talk that all the code on the GitHub was used, almost all, uh, to train their models. And uh, there are a lot of debates about it, whether this happened or not, and what were the licenses, Anyways, we'll talk about that. Uh, notice here some of the points which I have highlighted for you. I think we will together read this. It says, unfortunately, using cloud-based models like ChatGPT endangers your data and the code privacy as a developer. According to the OpenAI privacy policy, collected data, including a long list, but those, uh, but these two are our strongest concern in the article. Uh, <laughs> yes, there is a long list in these articles usually. First one is users data. This includes how you use and engage with service, your software version, um, connection information, and so on. They don't want to write it more than that. I'm pretty sure that's a fun read to read uh, in their information. Uh, user content, every conversation that you have with ChatGPT is stored by OpenAI. Hmm. That's why you see those logs that, hey, this is all the conversation you had. How convenient that is. Good, 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 man. Okay, uh, sensitive code data, uh, confidentiality of your company or intellectual property that you may wish to keep private, there is a possibility that ChatGPT could potentially 
uh, share such information with vendors, service, legal entities and so on upon request or accidentally. Why are you saying Itesh accidentally? Has this ever happened accidentally? <laughs> this is exactly the thing which is pretty popular on Twitter these days. I'm active there quite a lot. So notice here these uh, Samsung leaks and they are not just like something, hey, this probably didn't happen. Uh, there are even articles about it. So here is the here's the one which is about the Samsung. I, I found about a lot of lessons onto this one. Uh, this is the one lesson learned from the chat GPT Samsung leak. So here is here is a nice article by Cyber News. The information that staff of South Korean tech giants supposedly leaked include the source code of software responsible for measuring semiconductor equipment. Uh, they didn't go into the detail, but it was a chaotic. Uh, while OpenAI explicitly tell users not to share any sensitive information in the conversation. Come on, man. We are dumping down our entire code and <laughs> I don't know what's more sensitive than that. Uh, but this is commonly happening because people are getting trained on chat GPT. Beginners, fresher, they are constantly using it. Uh, and that's the way how things are going to be in the future. You cannot avoid AI, but you need to be concerned about it. The more succinct way of approaching this should be uh, companies controlling the data that is being sent to the model, the connection that are being able to make, and ultimately who in the org can use the model. Oh man, who can use? Everybody is going to use. And especially if you're on a work from home, <laughs> uh, forget that. Uh, this is not a one standalone incident. This one just got highlighted. There are many such incidents which are under the rug right now and probably very soon. Once they are public, I can talk about them, but I know personally some of these incidents that are happening. So this is, this is really a lot. And this is not a standalone uh, incident, you can see. Uh, the program does not cover model safety or hallucination uh, issues wherein chatbot is prompted to gener generate malicious code or faulty outputs. It's sharing the code left and right. That is this one. Uh, you might have seen this one quite popular uh, just recently. Chat GPT will no longer comply if you ask it to repeat a word forever. After recent prompt revealed, so in case you don't know, this was really, really popular on Twitter as well. I don't know if they have some screenshot or not. But if you just ask Chat GPT to repeat company after me uh, forever, it keeps on repeating the word company, company, company. And after that, it leaks data of an actual user, an actual person. Yes, that happened. A uh, fiasco, man, a fiasco. So what is the solution here? So one of the company came up with the solution and they are doing pretty good in this area that they are keeping the safety concern because now things are getting in the hands of developers and they are democratizing it. Even it's not really that difficult that you can take uh, your uh, something like Langchain and train your own models uh, using the OpenAI, then keep this model just with you. That is a possibility now. And you don't need to be a data science expert or a Python expert now. You can do this in all uh, in JavaScript or maybe just like these company pieces, they do all of this in Dart. So language dependency is also going away. But uh, they have introduced this uh, offline. By the way, I use their product. Uh, the, at the very top right that you see the P, <laughs> yeah, I use it all the time. Uh, so it's a free product, by the way, in case you want to take a look, check out. Uh, otherwise, just read the blog. It's it's really nice. So what they're doing is uh, they first found out that what are the challenges like enhanced security, regulatory compliances, user privacy, protection of intellectual property. I think the organization which might be most concerned about is protection of intellectual property. It's not easy, man, to write code which optimize stuff. And we deal with some of these stuff. Uh, I do have a company in which we work uh, all the time to optimize how we can store the videos and uh, kind of uh, kind of have stream those videos in much, much optimized way so that we can, uh, we can uh, protect us from the Amazon bills. <laughs> so this is really crucial information. This is intellectual property, man and customized adaptability. Uh, this is the one I'm really, really always concerned about. But uh, how does the offline? So what they are doing is they are actually bringing this whole AI thing into your offline. So if you install this Pieces OS, which is a small lady software, which gets installed on your system, and that's it. You actually train all of the things locally. You use that just like ChatGPT, but locally. They do everything locally. And by the way, there is a nice uh, incident recently, which one of the students actually shared that uh, we used Pieces in a hackathon uh, to actually uh, get all this uh, training of that entire that, hey, what this code base is all about. So I'll share that probably in the next video. Uh, but that's that is a really nice use case. So how Pieces achieve that? Ah, this is the one. Pieces has some technologies and infrastructure that enables offline AI functionality. And we are looking at the most important factor that you should know about. First one is local large language model. I think this is the future for the corporate 
uh, for the corporate chat GPT, their APIs are not the future, especially for those product based company, which outshine the other competition based on some of the things that they have developed. Like one of the thing which still fascinates me is how these local companies in India, like Zomato and Swiggy, they have a difference in how their riders reach to you and how the notification comes. It's, it's a subtle difference, but it is there if you use both the apps. Uh, similarly, Uber, Uber is using for taxis and all of that. They are still far more ahead than their competition in other countries. So for corporate, I think local large language model is the solution, is the way of adopting them. And uh, very soon, I think uh, this is something that you'll be seeing and you will be instructed specifically that, hey, on our organization, this is the instruction that you cannot use other chat GPT bot similar product. If you want to take a help from AI, which obviously will happen, you cannot avoid that, will happen through these local large language models. So I think corporate people, if you're listening, this is the way to go. Don't tell after that that, hey, they didn't say it, I said it. <laughs> so uh, pieces use a local large language model like Llama 2. I told you, this is the way how it goes. To power its own device uh, usage of the Pieces Copilot, which offers unique feature extending beyond mere code generation or question and answering. It revolves around comprehending your workflow with retrieval augmented generation. Understanding team dynamics with the related people, metadata, and connecting your tool chain. By the way, if you ever try this, uh, just try to give it a code repository locally to this pieces and ask it, hey, just understand this code base and give me bullet points and what did you find, what these files are doing. They do it pretty nicely because the whole model is now trained just on your code base. So it's fantastic in that case. They also have small language model for enterprises as well. Small language model refers to AI models designed for fewer parameter with fewer parameters and less computational complexity uh, compared to their larger counterparts. So yes, this is something which is really nice. Uh, you technically don't need that many parameters which ChatGPT needs because it knows a lot of context. And if you have ever worked with the vector databases, you know how many context as we have to give them. But if you just look at on the smaller scale of it, you don't need that many parameters to train just for code. You actually need a lot lesser and fewer. Uh, we already are coders, we talk a lot of jargon, but those jargons are very limited. <laughs> that is not too much. So edge learning uh, machine models known as small language models can run on devices due to their compact size, ensuring the data uh, and code security for organization and prioritize and maintain. So I think this is a good article to have a discussion around it. Uh, by the way, now after that, they mentioned that, hey, this is how Pieces does it. This is what we offer, desktop app, VS and Obsidian. Obsidian was nice, I hope. Wish someday I will start using it. As of now, I'm on VS Code just. And of course, the OS. <laughs> so this is a really nice. I'll link this article in the description section. And go ahead and check it out if you really wish to learn. And by the way, they are on the product hunt as well. Oh, that's nice. Uh, just visit the page. Uh, give these guys uh, upvote. I'll definitely do that. I think that is that is must have. Uh, these folks are doing pretty nice work, providing all these things for free and only charging the enterprise customer, which is really, really nice of them, uh, providing all the developers these powerful tool and ability that in the future you'll be using the similar kind of tools. I think that's a great way. So I request all of the people to give them an upvote uh, from this channel side and from India as well. Uh, go ahead and give them, show them some love that, hey, we are pretty awesome people here as well. Uh, so I think uh, we'll be discussing more such things because I found a couple of articles on Zero Doi as well, which are pretty interesting that everybody should read about them. Uh, so with this is starting this new section of reading on internet <laughs> with the tech. Uh, so I think, hope you learned something about it. Hope you uh, got some knowledge from it. And that's it for this one. Uh, let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.